This is welcome to the October meeting of the Economic Development Commission. Um, uh, we have, uh, I'll put up the agenda for a minute and, uh, and then I'll, I'll um, I'll stop sharing for a second. Uh, here's uh, the agenda, additions or deletions to the agenda, citizen comments. Uh, as usual, if time permits, um, we'll allow comments throughout the meeting. So if you have comments that are unrelated to the agenda, you should make them up front. Otherwise, you can hold them until when we're talking about the topic. Uh, we have a f brief financial update, uh, an update on the business relief fund in Woodstock Works. We've been doing these things, we may, we've been doing them every month. We've got uh, three items of new business, two substantive discussions and a quick scheduling thing. Uh, talking a discussion about marketing Wassel Weekend because it's so uh, important to our local economy. Um, uh, a discussion about whether we're ready to restart some of the longer term initiatives that we discussed, housing and business environment as examples. And then just briefly a reminder that we um, would like to start scheduling the discussion that we talked about uh, at the last meeting with the chamber. And one item, substantive item of old business to pass now a purchasing policy for the EDC. Um, are there, before we begin the agenda, I just like, so, uh, um, so I'll refer back to this, but I, it's pretty simple agenda, so I'll stop sharing it. Before we uh, ask if there are any additions or deletions to the agenda, I wanna welcome Alita Wilson, who has, is not, is attending as usual, but now she's attending as a member. Um, she was appointed to the EDC by the select board at their last meeting, and so we are very excited to have her. We're now a fully staffed um, with nine members, and so Alita, welcome. Do you want to, you've prepared, I assume, an opening speech, and so please go ahead and, yeah. <laughs> You're funny, John. No, I think my, my job in the first few meetings is to um, listen and learn and read. I've been reading all the minutes and I'm just really thrilled to be part of this. I'm very committed to the future of our little town. Um, so yeah, I just, I'm not gonna say a lot until I kind of understand what's going on. Well, I think you probably do, but anyway, welcome. That's great and good to have you. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? No, all right. Hearing or seeing none. Um, citizen comments. Uh, oh, sorry, Beth, you have an addition or a comment? Either one. I'm not sure which one. I didn't know if you wanted to mention the marketing restart Vermont grant that, that we're. That yes, we, in fact. If you, yes. Uh, okay, let's, let's add that to the minutes and um, let's add it under item 7A. Is that all right? Would you give us a brief update on that? And also, just if you wouldn't mind, if it's possible, can you just lower? your camera so we can, there we go. Okay, perfect. Would you mind giving us a, a two minute update on that? Cause you're the most current on it. When we get to, to the uh, marketing Wassel weekend item. Okay, thanks. Any other additions or deletions to the agenda? No, okay, hearing none. Um, are there any citizen comments that relate to other items other than the ones not on the agenda, uh, other than on the agenda? My glasses are a little fuzzy so I can't see everybody. No, all right, seeing none. Um, now I can't read the agenda. A financial update. Um, nothing has changed substantially from our financial position at the last meeting. We still are where we were, which is we have you know, more than $100,000 in our reserve. The business relief fund has about $45,000 remaining it. Well, no, sorry, less than that now. $30,000 $30, remaining in it roughly. Um, we have not yet gotten information about our revenue for the next quarter. Um, so we're still sort of in a financial holding pattern. Sally, did, is there anything else you want to add to that? No, I think the balance in the um, relief fund is more like 40,000. Even after we made the chamber yep. grant? Yeah, yeah. Well, because we've had, a, we've had some people repay. Right, the right. And, and part of that chamber grants last month um, did not come from the relief fund. Right. The rent did not, so. Yeah. When's the next? Uh, when do we expect uh, more revenue? Fe February, March, April, May, June, July. It typically would come in. Hold on, I'm looking. At I think one. November. Yeah, November is typically the next payment. Good. Okay. November for for the, for the quarter ending September. I think November fifteenth. Yeah, October should help a little bit. 
Yeah, well, if you, if for those of you that weren't or on the call or don't remember, the, the payment for April, May, and June was about 20% of what it was the year before. 25%, excuse me. Um, but we think July, August, and September will be a higher percentage. Um, okay. Uh, any qu other questions or comments regarding the finances? Okay, uh, update on business relief fund and Woodstock Works. I can dispense with Woodstock Works quickly. There's no update. We, we frankly haven't found the time yet to sort of re, reinvigorate it and, or relaunch it. It's still up and running. Um, Beth, as an aside, we, when we get to the discussion about the marketing and the passport program, which would be great if you would announce the passport program and the grant both. Um, uh, it would be, we could talk offline about whether or not the Woodstock Works website could enhance or add to the passport program. And uh, Sally, there's not much to report on the business relief fund, but could you? No, there, there isn't anything to report other than the fact that we made the awards to the chamber last, last month. So the balancing account is about 40,000. Okay. Three grants have been repaid as of the end of um, August, I believe. And the only question I have is whether you want to um, do anything with the outstanding grants and remind folks, you know, if they want to repay them, they can repay them, or if we just sit on it for a while. Yeah, this is your suggestion, Sally, is, is technically right, is a, simply a matter of communication since we don't require, it's just reminding them that they have the option to do it. There's no requirement for them to repay for another, well, to, for each loan 12 months after, so for another eight or nine months for anybody. Um, does anyone have a point of view that we should or should not communicate to grantees at this time? Jeff, do you want to make a comment? Yeah, just a comment that at least in most of the businesses downtown, um, the next few months uh, following the summer with uh, foliage and then holiday business, it would be easier to repay uh, those grants than um, in the spring when most of the businesses have less funds coming in. So it's probably not a bad idea to remind, if not now, before, before January 1st to remind businesses that they might want to repay. Okay, and, and again, just as, as a reminder to make sure that we have, the EDC has stated even in our original, this wasn't a sort of a secret, in our original promoting of the program that if the merchant, if the recipient of the loan was still in financial distress, and we didn't define that, we really left it up to the recipient to determine that. If the person was in financial distress, the business uh, 12 months later that the loan would be forgiven. And we have funded this program on the assumption that, that the loans would be forgiven which has already proven not to be the case. We've already got four people to repay. So, so just as, this is just as a reminder. All right, so a suggestion be made that, and perhaps Jeff, would you, it sounds like from a cash flow point of view, the best time to ask would be you know, December 5th or something. Correct. Yeah, so I right after so. our December meeting. Does anyone, would anyone disagree with that or? Can I just ask a clarifying question? Go ahead. So, so I see looking, you've got grants. When I think of grants, that is money that goes out for which you don't ask people to repay, whereas a loan, is something that you're encouraging businesses to pay back. So looking at your financials, where where is the difference between the loan versus the grant? These were loans. These were the right the, in our financials. We haven't dif, dif, we have not uh, differentiated between those. We've cons we've accounted for them, you know, in Excel as a grant. Okay. But but the agreement with the recipients was that it was a loan that could be forgiven. So. Um, all right, then if hearing no objections, then Sally, I think we'll adopt your, uh, your suggestion immediately after our meeting in December. And so if you could just make a note of that to, so that we remember to do it. Any okay. other comments? I'm sorry? I said, we'll do, I'll do that. Okay. Great, thank you. Any other, uh, every month we, we, have a, we have a very brief discussion about whether we should maintain the business relief fund or shut it down or repurpose it. Is there anyone who would, if we, if we don't take action, it stays active in anticipation of a potential 
difficult coming season or new wave? Does anyone, would anyone like to suggest that we do something different with it, that we make a change? Well, let me just ask for, let me just see from the EDC. Well, go ahead, Patrick, make, make your comment and then we'll. It's more of a question. Uh, I think most businesses are gonna have less cash flow come January. So wouldn't it make sense to hold, hold it open uh, for people who may have struggles through the winter? Yeah, I, I, I would be in favor of that. I, I'm not proposing we take any action. I just feel like an obligation to ask the question every month uh, only because you know it's $50,000 for a purpose and we don't wanna just forget about it, so. Yeah, John, we've always talked about the need being further down the road yeah. not than well, it is today. But I'm given the explanation about cash flow timing that Patrick and Jeff spoke about, perhaps what we can do just from an agenda management point of view is uh, not consider this question until February unless someone wants to raise it. <laughs> Since what we expect is that the, set, the next few months won't be difficult, but we shouldn't be lulled into a sense of security that February or March or April could be the difficult time. So anyone anyone on the EDC is free to bring up this issue between now and let's say February or March. Otherwise we'll consider the, the relief fund to be active with no further action. And so we can shut it down at any time, but we won't have to deal with it every month. Um, okay, any other comments on, on the business relief fund? Yeah, just, just so you're aware, I know Patrick knows this, that the lodging, not just lodging, but businesses are trying to, for the most part, um, trying to get themselves the next June, and that's the key. And so we're, the, the state funds that we're all going after is uh, uh, we're looking just for that and we feel what we're getting is probably not enough. We're going to need a little more, hopefully in the second round that comes through. But um, so just keeping that in mind with these funds, um, that's we're probably going to be dealing with that. That might be the timing that we should would be keeping this open. OK, thank you. OK. All right, uh, new business. The first item of new business is marketing Wassel Weekend. And Courtney, I'll ask you to, to kick off the suggestion that you made, but be, sorry, but before you do, <laughs> I tricked you. Um, just as a matter of an update to the group, uh, the chamber, uh, well, initially the chamber and the EDC, and then I think it's sort of the chamber has, um, uh, has been active in requesting some marketing uh, dollars and, and developing a marketing program. So Beth, could you just take a couple of minutes and explain the passport program and the grant? And we'll see if there's any things we can do to, to help. Yeah. Now, as opposed to 7D? No, no, so this is 7A. I'm, yeah, sorry, I meant as part okay. of 7. Yeah, so okay. preceding yes. the marketing Wassel Weekend discussion. Um, if you remember from last month or read the minutes, both the EDC um, applied for a restart uh, Vermont marketing grant, which was a $10,000 grant um, to be given to a community to drive people into businesses between September 15th and December 15th. Um, the chamber also applied for a grant at that time. Um, you guys applied for a $10,000 grant with the matching funds from Four Square. Class four in Berlin. Class four, I'm sorry. Um, the chamber applied for about a $4,200 grant um, to create a passport program. And that passport program um, is to drive business into 20 businesses, restaurants, and downtown businesses with the um, business each giving a $20 gift card that will be drawn weekly um, for the people who have completed this passport. If you get, if you go and visit and spend twenty dollars in any of the any ten of the twenty businesses, you it was also said yesterday, you, you um, get from you get a um, you get entered into the drawing, and we've created was um, Woodstock Euro stickers, and everybody who picks up a passport, will get a Euro sticker um, for their car that says Woodstock, Vermont on it. We got a call a, a week ago from Gary Holloway from the um, 
ACCD to say that the EDC had a program that didn't quite meet their needs and the chamber had one that met their needs, but, and the collective also created a grant that didn't meet anybody's needs, but the collectives. And so how can the EDC and the chamber work together to create the passport program and pay for anything printed and um, a $500 a group of $500 gift cards that we're going to purchase from the participating businesses to give to the grand prize winner and the marketing piece that the EDC created. Um, and so John and I met, I think he's talked to several of you um, and I resubmitted the grant last on Monday for the total of $10,000. Um, I've heard tangentially that we received the grant, but I haven't had, I don't have an awards letter yet. Um, and what the marketing committee, which Courtney is on and Isabel and myself and Sally is going to discuss how we can market, um, whether it's seven days. Um, we already have about $2,200 in for the Vermont standard to market the passport program locally, maybe VPR, um, uh, seven days, Vermont digger, some of the um, CAX on online. Um, and so we have that to do, but that's the essence of the grant. We have about 150 passports at the office ready to be distributed tomorrow to the stores. Hopefully we'll get the balance and the um, euros uh, tomorrow. So just a couple of quick, thank you, Beth. If I can just make a couple of quick comments about this. First of all, there's no money out of pocket from either the EDC or the chamber for this program. It's being paid for by the state. Um, sorry, the first comment I should make is Beth, thank you for creating the passport program. And um, the proposal that we made is still on the table, but not for a state grant. It's basically to create some video marketing content. And we'll come back to it at a later EDC meeting when the marketing committee can consider it. But class four in Burlington has agreed to basically fund half the project if we can come up with the other half. And uh, we, we, I just need to engage the marketing committee in considering this when we're gonna decide to re restart our longer term marketing initiatives. And I think we're gonna talk a little bit about that in a minute with Wassel. Um, the other thing I just want to add, though, is that we have, in effect, $5,800 in addition to the, as part of the chamber grant to spend on paid media. Courtney in particular, but others have been talking for a long time about how we, we, it's great that we have a website and it's working nicely and we're getting more and more people to it, but we're not driving it. We're not paying to drive people to it, and we could do that. So I would just encourage the marketing committee, as you think about allocating these free dollars, to, to consider some of it as a potential small test for future paid advertising to try to figure out whether it's more effective in the Vermont standard or on Instagram or on seven days or whatever. So that when we actually start to allocate big money or bigger money to it of our own, we'll have had some data to, uh, to base that on. So just brief comments said then Beth and I maybe included, included in the grant was $1,200 to um, for Instagram and Facebook ads. For the thing about the grant is they were very specific wanting to, for everyone that's receiving these funds to support Vermont businesses. So they didn't want to see a ton of money going, you know, to uh, California or wherever else. They wanted us to spend it with places like the Vermont Standard. Right. No, understood. Fair enough. Yeah. Patrick, did you have your hand up? I'm not sure. Patrick, and then Alita. Uh, uh, in, in terms of the website and, and doing paid stuff to drive traffic there, has there been any thought to doing a strong SEO program as part of the website effort? Uh, yes. And, you know, I, I, Beth, just to kind of, I, I think we have to look at that grant because if it's supporting, if the ads are supporting um, a Vermont uh, business or businesses, we should be able to do uh, such as, you know, Google ads, such as uh, 
as Patrick's kind of mentioned, or the or social right. media, because it's our it's our pages, it's our it's our platform uh, to drive it. Even though it's a you know a, a large company that's not based here in Vermont, I think it's something we can get away with uh, and, and go I on agree. that. It's probably the easiest route for us to go, and I I agree. So I think this is a marketing committee discussion. I agree. I'll get you, you guys to decide what, what to do. So. Yeah. Alita. Just a question, are these uh, gift cards that people, um, it would be populated with money where they would go into a store and spend money? That's The purpose is to pick up a passport at any bed and breakfast, the Woodstock Inn, the Welcome Center, and all of the participating businesses, pick up the card, go buy something at the Unicorn for $20 or $30, get your card stamped, then go to Woody's Mercantile and spend another $30, yada, yada. So you're going to go to, the, to, to at least 10 businesses, get your card stamped, and then either with, we're asking for name, address, and obviously email address. So we're collecting that data. And then they go into a, it, say next week, everybody on this call goes to 10 businesses and and spends, you know, 20 or $30 or more each, then it'll go into a drawing. And then we're going to pick one every Tuesday to give to that person to go back to that store to buy another $20 worth of merchandise. Uh, okay, I misunderstood. I thought it, the state was giving us funds to have preloaded gift cards that people could no. walk to a store and swipe it you know, say you've got 30 bucks per person, you could go into any store and buy whatever you want and deducts it. It's, it's a market, they're paying for the marketing, basically. The market. That's all they're paying for. Okay. Well, and the, and the, yeah. Well, and the, and they are going to give us $500 to buy gift cards so that the, the person at the end that gets the, the big drawing gets a $500 gift card to Woodstock. They're, they're also paying for the printing. I mean, all the costs associated to that. That's um, anything printed. Right. It has to be locally made. So I spend $30 a week just on masks at Unicorn. So I could, I would be looking forward to this. Right. So, so the idea is actually, you know, people like yourself or all of us on this call is to try to hit 10 stores. So that was the idea. We're already talking to people who like to shop in Woodstock. Let's try to get them into 10 stores or restaurants, not just their five Bravo. usual ones, but expand, you know, expand your, your scope. Got it. Okay. Thank you, Beth. Um, all right. So this is part of, this is just a marketing introduction, basically, to uh, a discussion about how do we, about marketing Wassa Weekend. And Courtney, why don't you introduce the topic and we'll have a discussion about it. Sure. And let me start with a little caution. Um, this year, we still are attempting to uh, at least do one of our events, which is we feel is the most easiest to do. And we're not, we're actually not looking to boost the audience this year. We actually going to try to keep that tame as we, as we can, because uh, we're, we're, we're going to be limiting, limiting it naturally because, um, you know, Pentangle's not doing their event. We're not doing the house tours. All those things just don't make sense. The only thing that, that really made sense to us that was uh, safeguarded as best we could was to have a parade, which is 45 minutes to an hour long outdoors and try to spread it out and, and reroute it um, a little bit. So it, it made more sense with a lot of help from uh, Robbie and, and David Green and so forth. So, but this discussion for me, for all of us is there's two things. There's some things that we may need this year uh, funded and it may be not just the EDC but other people that can pitch in but uh, I know we talked about the need for maybe some porta potties because that obviously things like the library which usually is open to use the restrooms is not going to be uh, the Woodstock Inn is not going to be open for restrooms uh, we didn't do that last year either uh, we're going to keep that to the guests only uh, I think uh, Lita was talking about possibly having a town hall guest uh, bathrooms open, but we need an attendant to clean that periodically. Uh, so there's a, there's a variety of things that I think, Beth, you may have 
or at least starting a list of things that we want to ask for. Right. And then, and then the, the second part of it is just the long term when things are better and we really do need to market this and drive it. Um, I'm not just focused on Wasal. I'm actually focused on the month of December. Um, we've been really successful for a two and three day week. And I think we were a two day week and that kind of expanded to a sort of a three day week weekend. Um, but we have an opportunity in Woodstock to really create a holiday um, month for us um, and ex to start expanding it and trying to grow it as a place that I think there's some natural traffic that's here, but those other weekends and weeks uh, leading up to it or right after are a little bit of a lull. And we think that in the long run of creating um, some type of winter wonderland, feeling a, a holiday spirit, whether it's uh, at, in the, on the green or, and or at Billings Farm um, and a variety of month long activities and so forth. Um, I really believe that that is an opportunity for all of us, all of our businesses to uh, make this the place to go in December to do some of your holiday shopping, but at least get in the spirit of it. I think uh, the holidays seem to come and go really fast and the lead up to it is an exciting time for most. And, um, you know, we, it's an opportunity that we have there. And there's a lot of places in, in the United States and in Europe that do a really good job of doing that. And I think uh, we can learn from that. Um, John Hollowell has, has shared a bunch of uh, ideas that he thought. Um, he also comes from Disney, where Disney was, magically makes, this, uh, makes uh, Disney World into this uh, holiday place for, for a month. Um, so there's opportunity there. I think the EDC from a economic growth standpoint, um, first of all, uh, can be a, a great player and a great um, uh, supporter of Wausau Weekend to begin with, and then look at opportunities to expand on that. Um, if you look at Wausau alone, I think the numbers we came up with uh, two years ago in a report was about $16 million in the, in kind of the immediate area that the revenue comes in. That, that's unbelievable amount of money in just a two or three day period. Imagine us uh, building that over a longer period of time. But I think it is, that alone tells you to keep, at least keep the, keep the sustainability of Wausau weekend and after this year when we're going to be extremely limited and we're going to have to kind of maybe do a little reboosting of of getting that traffic back here um, that uh, our role is going to be key in that um, it's also going to it's not going to just take the EDC it's going to take the community to to put in dollars um, that they can get a return on um, but uh, I think it's time to talk more about this. I know we've had discussions in the past. Alita? Yeah, and Courtney, I completely agree with you. And sort of our philosophy with Pentangle is to try not to deplete our limited resources this year. Um, as you guys may remember, we were going to do Elf the Musical and try to create a wassail week. Um, and I think you're right, Courtney, that it doesn't need to be a wassail week. It could be the month of December. Um, and so, you know, we were committed to doing a big production um, that would bring people before Wassail Weekend and have them stay after Wassail Weekend. Um, and I also think it's important um, for all of us to think about other weekends where we can come together and maximize, um, you know, I'm, I'm really thinking about the future of our organization and our success is going to be and the success that we can bring to businesses is Pick those weekends where we know people are going to come. Develop programming, you know, do some local marketing, shop local, whatever. But I think um, I think you're exactly right that we know Wassail is a proven, and it's well worth our investment. Maybe not this year, but to start planning really early for next year. And we will we will do a big show hopefully <laughs> December 2021. Uh, Beth, hold on one second. I think Larry might have been raising his hand. Were you Larry? I couldn't tell. No. Okay, Beth. Um, I, I think that there is no issue that people will come for the month of December. People, the emails that, that I am getting 
you know, two, three, four a day are hungry for the magical, the the sense of magic that Wassel brings. And I think Woodstock in general brings that. Um, and and people just want it to happen this year. But in order for it to happen, I, I'm not sure it's the marketing piece, but it's the safety piece that we are really going. And it's not the chamber. This is a, a group larger than the chamber. It is the community that the EDC is supporting. And, and please know that. Um, we're talking about, you know, uh, $1,200 for porta potties because I can't have 15 people in the welcome center safely right now waiting in line. Um, our goal is to raise work really hard on with Robbie and David, how to move people so that they'll stand on Pleasant street and Elm street and Triview park. And so we can have 150 people down this way and another 150 people this way. And, the inn people will stay on the inn property and the, the parade will go around the inn. Um, the police department, the cleaning of both um, Pentangle and the Welcome Center, because that's going to have to be done hourly. Um, and the shuttle and the horse wagon. So those are all things that, that I have uh, a list of that that really need to be considered for 2020. And we've never come for help. Uh, you know, this is a, an event that, that the chamber and Pentangle and the uh, Congo church and the 10, the library have all been able to make happen um, on, on their own strengths. And a lot, of, a lot of other donations in there too, Beth. There are a lot of donations in there, yeah. but but we're going to need help to support the community this year. Yeah, I, I, let me let me um, suggest what the EDC could do. Um, I, I think there's. Um, I, I would like to propose that the e EDC play. A, conven a convening and funding role. Uh, th those two things in particular, and that we convene all of the groups that Beth described quickly. I think if we do this quickly, we don't wait till our next meeting. We have just enough time to do it well. Um, we have obviously, there, many of the tasks will naturally fall to certain people, it, you know, um, but I think we should include in those tasks marketing. And uh, we have a marketing committee, so we know to whom that task falls, but we need to think about funding marketing. Um, and so what I would suggest is that we, um, is that we agree tonight that the EDC will convene these large, this, the community basically, represented by different groups who could contribute. And that in that convening, which will happen, you know, within, you know, uh, seven, eight days from now, <laughs> soon, enough time to just announce it and invite people. And we'll divide up the work and in that me and, and identify the funding gaps, where the funding needs are and so forth. Uh, include, and that in addition, and that we decide that tonight, I don't, doesn't need the select board approval, we can simply initiate that. But that secondly, tonight we discuss uh, releasing some of the EDC marketing funding to this effort. Uh, I don't know that actually we have to decide on the amount tonight. We might be able to decide on the amount at the next meeting in early November and spend that money in November. If, if the marketing, Courtney, if you and Beth and Isabel think that that's sufficient timing. Let me just remind people about the funding status. Uh, the, the, we have approved, and we and the select board have approved an $80,000 budget for the marketing group for 2020. We then recalled 44,000 of that and left the group with a budget, a working budget of 36,000, uh, which was enough to keep the website running and the content created. And it looks to me, Sally, based on our report in September, that we will not exceed that 36,000 and we may 
run a little bit lower than that for the, for the full year. There may be a few thousand dollars left. Would that be an accurate interpretation? Sally? So yeah, I know. Yeah, I hear you saying. I, I, you'd have to ask me that after I get a chance to look at the notes here because I didn't. Okay. Really... Sorry, I'm putting you on the spot there. But I'm looking yeah. at. I'm looking at as of as of sep September one, we had spent twenty one thousand. Yeah. Yeah. And so I don't think so. The, so the the question is, I think we could, if we chose, and the marketing committee came back to us, and said, based on that convening of the community, we think we need. $22,000, you know, half of the remaining 44 that's been held back. We need $22,000 and here's how we would spend it. We could, could I think it would be well worth it. Um, I think the payback for that, we would not be exceeding our budget. Um, we haven't done this in the past, but making sure that Wassel is as strong as it can be this year and that we don't erode it for future years is probably a pretty good investment would be my opinion. Uh, if Courtney and if anyone who's on the marketing committee on this call could opine as to whether or not we could make that decision at our next meeting, having prepared a proposal between now and then for specific spending, then we don't need to do anything now. We can do it then if that's not too late. Um, I'll, I'll, so Isabel first and then Beth and if Courtney disappeared or so I have a question. I want to know, I, I want to make sure I understood correctly. You want to allocate more funds than you usually do to marketing Wassel, correct? Uh, uh, I, I don't want to say, well, I, it's, then, then we usually do. I want to allocate funds to marketing Wassel. Okay. I'm wondering, and this is probably a question for, I'm just wondering if this is the right time to bring as many people as we can into town versus using this year as a, a selling point for next year's Wassel. Yeah, when me, like people suggested on this call, we could make it last almost a whole month when all you know hotels and restaurants will be open at 100%. And I think maybe we want to allocate more funds to making sure that this Wassel is super secure. And, you know, we talked to, let's have twice as many porter parties as we thought. Let's have all this social distancing so that this Wassel is a complete success and doesn't turn into a COVID hotspot, for example, which is yeah. things that we had talked about. Sorry, I, let, let me just clarify what I was saying. I was using Wassel too much too loosely. When I say every time I said Wassel, I should have meant the month of December, yeah. including but not limited to Wassel. And the purpose of it wouldn't would could very well be exactly what you said. I would well, support any. Remember any my words. first my first words. The first part was no. I, I agree with you, Isabella. It's it's more about communicating the safety of it and the, uh, we probably have to communicate the things that are happening, things that are not happening um, in one way or another. I think you're correct. There are, what, what Beth's trying to say is some of those dollars may have to be shifted to be used for safety needs as opposed to trying to get more people here. Right, um, right. So and I think we all kind of agree, even the Wasso committee was apprehensive um, we even have a deadline date in case things get worse in some way, shape, or form that we would even not do the parade. But I think the one thing we felt that that was the safest thing we could do, it was the one thing that people really needed to see to keep the brand of Wassail going. And at the same time, it's outdoors. You can spread people out. It's a very short period of time. And then people disperse to where they go. You're not going to have a bonfire where everybody goes to to go Saying quite, you're not going to have 400 people at Pentangle. You're not going to have people going through other people's houses. Um, people are going to be staying in their lodging place wherever they are, all around the region. So, um, and I, I probably not going to see the numbers we normally see. Yeah. And I also wanted to say that maybe we could invite you to the meeting that we have been having for the last four or five weeks on Wednesday at 3:30. Oh. So we, the, the committee, the group of people, Alita, Angela, the library, um, the chamber, chamber people, Jeff Billings, Free, yeah. Billings Farm, everybody that's kind of involved meet 
at 3.30 on Wednesday afternoon. Oh, all right, fine. So the convening is already happening. That's fine. That right. Yeah. And, and Robbie, David Green, you know, people that we need there um, are already yeah. convening. So well, we'd love to have you. All right. Well, then let me just get a sense from the from the members of the EDC only now. Um, the, you know, if we were to, if, you know, we, we've held back the $44,000 of the 80,000 for marketing in 2020, because we, we, uh, we, we have that money available. Um, obviously, if we don't spend it this year, we can spend it next year. So we don't, there's no, it's not free money by any means. Um, whether it's for communicating the month of December activities, communicating their safety, communicating their existence, or whether it is in fact spending to make those, to help help make those events safe, you know, it, marketing or actually supporting the programming. How do people in the EDC feel about devoting, you know, a, a good chunk, I don't want to say what, you know, half of this 44,000, if, if it came to that, to supporting the success of a December program in Woodstock. Um, let me just go around on my screen. Um, uh, Julia, first, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I, I have, I, I, I come at this from um, some distance in that my livelihood does not depend at all on tourism. So cheers, take that with a grain of whatever it is. But, um, and, and, you know, and I've been leery of the amount of tourists that have been coming into Woodstock um, in the middle of a pandemic. So I am all for anything safety oriented. To me, I, you know, Isabel's point was very, very well taken on my end and um, makes me feel better about anyone coming to town. But, you know, I get freaked out by the license plates that I see everywhere, all day, every day. I avoid downtown because of it. So, you know, there's a cost to, you know, attracting tourists at this moment in time does levy a cost to some locals, um, at least. And so I think anything that um, can help bridge that gap is worth it. Okay. All right. Good point. Mika, you're next on my screen, left to right. Do you have any, any view about, about this, whether, about whether it's marketing to make people aware, marketing the safety, making the safety happen, or none of the above, if you're opposed to it? Yeah. Um, I feel similarly to Julia in that, you know, I'm, I'm, I get nervous about the idea of, of crowds on one hand. I'm very happy to see that our local businesses have tourists and, and have customers. I think that's really super important and it makes me happy to see it. I am um, very happy to see all the people in masks and it, it appears that people are following the rules that they need to be following. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't want our our safety protocols to go any further necessarily than they have to, but I also wouldn't want to take any shortcuts, you know? So I wanna just make sure that we're always doing the right thing and we always have the fact that we are in the middle of a pandemic at the top of our mind. Um, if there is a way to safely execute a Wassel weekend or, or some version of that, whether it's a weekend or a week or whatever, if there's a way for us to safely execute it, I think it's fantastic. And, and it does help keep Woodstock on the map in terms of uh, December destinations and things. And I, I would hate to see that go away because, you know, with all the other things that are going away in the middle of this pandemic. Um, so if we can find a way to safely do it, then yeah, I'm all for it. Okay, Larry. Uh, yeah, uh, Mika just said exactly what I would have said. I, I'm, uh, I think it's great if we can uh, can do something that would be uh, a spirit boost to the community, with safety as being the um, you know a, a, a prime goal. And I think if we do it safely, uh, we get more credit that way anyway. And 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 uh, trying to keep it in front of people and uh, with the eye towards 2021. So I I'm a little you're you're a bit you're uh, not being very specific because you can't about how much we're talking about and so I guess we'd be wanting to look at that exactly but I'm I'm in favor of the of the general general notion right 
I'm really assuming I, that we would, I'm really just trying to figure out how during the next four weeks we participate in this weekly meeting, whether we, you know, and I, you know, what we try to emphasize and so forth with the assumption that our funding decision would be made at our next meeting. So, so that, basically that's, you're, you're basically asking would, would I, in my case, would I be uh, open to the idea of releasing some of this $44,000 for a, uh, for, for things to be determined later on as just as, as a matter of principle? Correct. And that at our next meeting, you won't, the things to be determined will be determined and we'll put it in front of the EDC and you can all each decide whether they are the kinds of things you would be comfortable with. But, but I just want to know whether we can go into the month participating by saying we could be a funding source, because I think that to make December a successful month, it's going to require more funding than it has in the past, to Beth's earlier point. And I think we're the source for that. And it is economic development. So, so. Okay, Alita, do you, uh, you want to chime in? Oh, you're muted, Alita. Oh, sorry. So I guess that I would sort of echo, I think what Isabel said is, you know, plan for 2021 and make it amazing and try not to um, flitter away resources. Um, I, I am on the committee with Beth and, and I think that Dave Green and Robbie raised some really important questions for us. And do I ever want to cancel or postpone? No, but do we want to have a situation in Woodstock that you know we've got some sort of spreading? Um, I don't know. I think we just have to, it's a, it's a, it's a difficult choice. Okay, Courtney, you, I know you you propose this, but yeah, I'm sorry, Alita, that was about spending money on on safety stuff. But anyway, um, the um, I do have to say this: we did. Uh, Beth reached out to uh, Ted Brady, our deputy secretary, who seems to answer most of the questions about um, about what we can do, what we can't do, or what they allow. And and do remember that the actually legally the the state um is very they're very careful what they do because legally a lot of things that they're telling everybody what they're supposed to do is not um they can't make you do do it so it's it's not they're just it's just greatly suggested that it looks like it's mandatory so he's really good at uh um taking the language they have on there and and trying to uh, tell you what they were thinking and what they understand. So he was basically uh, said that, you know, the parade can happen as long as you don't have more than 150 people in it and that they're distancing and doing all of that, um, that you guys have all these safety measures in place for crowd control. Um, I don't think we met, we did mention about the length of the event, of the actual event that it was, you know, and that it's outdoors and so forth. So um, they were not, um, they were not against us having it. Uh, they just wanted to make sure we were doing the right thing. Just out of curiosity, how were you, how is the uh, committee planning on monitoring the 150 number? The 150 is just for the people in the parade on the horses. Right. It's the parade. Then, Got it. Okay. And that is actually probably under 90 with the walking people. So, and if you think about it, as some people have said, so you have to be a cow length between people. We're going to be horse lengths between, you know, we're going to be social distancing in the parade. Right, but I, I think the, the issue, yeah. it probably isn't the, the, the marchers, but the, the audience, so. Right, and, and that was the point, is yeah. that we're all at 150 outside. The parade is completely different. Um, right. So it's more how we are going to have people con, con being, Purgating. we can have 150 people. Right. Well, let, well, let's not solve it well, tonight. Right. tonight. Just tonight. as a local who has gone very excitedly to Wassel Weekend, parade in the past and who has hosted Christmas parties and sent people down with mulled wine to watch the activities, you know, um, I'll nearly certainly be skipping this year because right. I, again, because I'll be avoiding people from out of town because I'm too afraid to be in proximity with people who have not proven themselves to be really great 
actors at um, social distancing. So just a, a perspective from a person. Right. Well, I think that uh, I'll just add my last two cents, which is I, I think Isabel's uh, definition of the objective, which is that it's worth, if I am putting words in your mouth, Priscilla, but I'm using the key word you use, which is it's w probably worth investing to have a successful wassail. And success means that it's enjoyable for some good number of people, not necessarily more than in the past. In fact, it can be successful with less than in the past. But certainly if it becomes a, a COVID related incident, whether it's for locals or visitors, it, it's going to tarnish, it would, first of all, obviously hurt locals and it's going to tarnish our image. So we need to have a successful event. And I think there's certainly been enough emphasis by a number of people on the EDC that safety is something that we need to see in order to be able to fund this. So I think based on this, unless anyone objects, Beth, if we could accept your offer to attend the Wednesday at 3.30 meeting so that we and any, I invite any of the EDC members to attend, if, well, if that's okay, it sounds like it's a large group so we won't make it unproductive. I'll certainly attend on behalf of the EDC and anyone else is welcome to Wednesday at 3.30. And Beth, maybe you can send around you know, an invite so that we know it. But but what that means is that we'll come back. I'll ask, we'll push this group to help us to help develop a specific funding proposal and an explanation in particular of how safety is going to be developed by the November 5th, whatever our meeting is, November 5th or 6th, something like that. Uh, and at that point, we at the EDC, each of us can apply the kind of perspectives that we've indicated tonight. Um, I think it will be a tough needle to thread to meet the requirements that the EDC members have set out. I don't think we're in complete unison about it, which means we'll just have to vote, but it's not impossible. And it would be worthwhile. If we, I think everyone would agree that if we can make this successful, it would be a good investment. And so Isabel, thank you for framing it that way. Does anyone object to that process? And we'll make a decision, you know, but, but that gives Beth, that gives the group four weeks to come up with the specifics needed. And, and you and Isabel and, and Courtney, you've heard the, the sentiment of, of what we'll be looking for next month in terms of, particularly in terms of safety. Anyone object to that? No. Okay, good. All right, so that's our plan. Thank you for that. Th Courtney, thank you for raising it. Um, We've just a second item of new business is restarting the longer term EDC initiatives. In January, we discussed, along with the funding of all of our programs, we discussed two longer term initiatives that weren't asking immediately for funding, but were important and we expected in the future would ask for funding, but we needed to develop proposals. One was housing and one is improving the business environment, which um, could include business policies that might make the economy grow faster. Uh, it could even include things about the physical re revitalization of the downtown area, um, creating a, an environment that, that is conducive to growing the economy. Um, we haven't, the last three or four months, four well, the last six months, we've really been focused on temporary business relief and ad hoc COVID related requests for funding. We can't lose focus on that, but I think we're ready. We have the capacity to start to, to begin at least to convene those two groups. Um, unfortunately, Charlie Kimball, who was a member of the EDC at the time we started them and now is no longer, um, had made some progress in getting a smaller group of people to, to commit to being part of a housing group um, to think about how could we expand the supply of housing, which will grow the economy. But, um, and there's some interest in other, there's some other groups that are interested in expanding housing supply as well. So I, I, there's really no specific action that we need to take tonight other than uh, directing me to either start to push to reconvene these groups, to create these, to recreate the housing group, to create the business environment group, to seek out volunteers, both from the EDC and outside the EDC, and to begin to come back to the EDC with some suggestions for what, what issues they want to deal with, and then over time dealing with them. 
to either direct me to do that over the next month and get this started or to direct me not to do it, that we should wait because it's not the right time. Maybe it's premature and so forth. I, I would like, I would like to suggest we do it because eventually the short term becomes the long term. <laughs> we keep, we keep focusing. I, I was struck actually when Alita was interviewed by the select board and, um, asked if she would do anything differently. And the one thing she said was that she would get us, try to get us to focus. I'm putting words in your mouth, Alita, but, but basically try to make sure that we were focusing on long-term impact. And that sort of struck a chord. And by the way, that, that's a sentiment. I see a number of you nodding and it's a sentiment that we've all had and said to ourselves in the past. And then COVID came along. So it's not really our fault, but are we ready to... Are, Sorry, I have these announcements that appear on a speaker system in our house, which I'm sparing you from. It has to do with dinner being ready. Um, so, I, I, so does anyone object to if I can if I can put my thumb on the scale slightly of I'd like to move ahead. Does anyone object to that? If you don't, then I will reach out to each of you. Just a reminder: we talked about the fact that not everyone on the EDC has to participate in every committee. Some of you have the time to join this meeting and others have the time to do this plus. So if you're interested, you can, but if you want to say no, that's okay too. Um, anyone have any objection with me proceeding to start restart these? I see most people are saying it's fine. Um, it, it, great, let, let me suggest that there's a lot to talk about in the substance of both the housing and the business environment, but let me suggest that we not talk about it until we have a group of people ready to come to the meeting and say, We've, we've committed to study these issues. Here are the kinds of things we think we should be talking about. What input does the EDC have as we get started? And I don't know if that will be next month or the month after, but it will be soon, so. Okay, any comments or questions about that? I might just, uh, just add two cents here. Given the time of year, the pandemic, the upcoming holidays, all the things, uh, there might be a more, uh, there might be a better chance of getting people to kind of sign on board for that if we push it back past the holidays um, before we start any more larger projects. Fair enough. Um, and in fact, um, a good suggestion. And what, in fact, if I start now to create these groups and ask people, um, no, no, it's okay, man. Sorry. Thanks. That was the announcement. I'll, I'll take it. it. I'll take some of that. Yep, right here. <laughs> you want to send her over here? <laughs> <laughs> no, that food is mine. Um, if I start now, Mika, we will in fact end up starting in January, or February with, with real time yeah. commitments. It just sure. takes a while to. So well, let's make sure that, that we don't move too fast. <laughs> I think that <laughs> you'll all ensure that. But, uh, but okay, fair point. And the idea would be launching in January for real work, but maybe we can, maybe we can sort of set the agenda between now and the end of the year. And I'll, I'll make that the sort of the objective. Any other comments about this? No, okay. Um, last item, it's just a scheduling item. I'm, I'm almost doing this just to remind all of us, but I really, if it's okay and I see we have the right group of people, exactly the right group of people on this call. Um, I really would like to convene a meeting uh, between the leaders of the chamber, the several select board, or whoever on the select board would like to represent the select board and the EDC to discuss longer term consistent funding for government funds to support the chamber. And then to give the EDC at least and op the members an opportunity to um, you know, to about to assess and, and opine on the appropriateness of whatever program we then come up with. I think there's, you know, um, I think some of some members of the EDC have some questions about how appropriate it is to for the for the EDC or the town to be funding the chamber. Uh, others are more much more amenable to it. I don't think anyone is unalterably opposed to a good solution that allows us to do economic development and allows the chamber to be a very effective player in that. Uh, and I think we would all like to get out of the mode of ad hoc requests that provide no security and long-term 
planning ability for the chamber and create a lot of work and discussion and debate among both the select board and, and the EDC. So can I specifically, are there any one, Mary, I see you're here representing, I mean, you, you're you here and you're on the select board. Um, Isabel and Ray, you're here, Beth, um, and my colleagues on the EDC. Is anyone, you know, I'd like to convene that meeting between now and the next time and I'll reach out to do that. Anybody object to that or 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 have any comments or guidance that you'd like to add? Well, let me first ask the EDC members, uh, any any guidance for that other than, now, obviously, we're going to come back to the EDC and to the select board with whatever the discussions yield. Have to be it's, it, it's just a very healthy discussion. I think, um, you know, it's, uh, it, any support of that is right in the realm of what we're supposed to be doing if it, if it fits the bill. So yeah. something we need to consider. Any other comments? Okay, all right, good, so we'll schedule that. Okay, um, our last item is, uh, sorry, actually, you know, Mary, sorry, can I just get, uh, I've mentioned this idea of a, of a meeting with a couple of select, or someone from the select board and the EDC and the chamber, because the select board does in fact fund the chamber quite considerably. I, I, no one has ever objected to it, but I'm not sure if anyone has ever said, yes, that's okay. When we've never talked about funding thinking about our funding in this specific case as one one pot you know to coordinate between us are you comfortable with that or at least for now are you comfortable at least having the discussion oh yes absolutely having a discussion i think it's a good idea okay. um a lot of a lot of those areas of funding etc under are under a lot of discussion right now so this is an appropriate time to do that okay perfect all right great good. thank I just, you i realized that i had sort of not waited to hear the answer to my question. So, okay. The last item we have on the agenda is the purchasing policy requirement. It's listed, it's listed on the agenda as requirements for EDC and grantees, but it's actually what we're proposing is just for the EDC. Um, and Larry, I'll, I'll ask you to, um, in a minute, actually, I'll just ask, ask you to summarize the policy, just the policy that we're proposing, if that's all right, I'll give the sort of the background and then could you summarize the policy that we're proposing? Because we're going to ask for, we have a specific proposal, Larry's going to, we'll make a motion that we adopt a particular policy. Uh, is that all right, Larry? Yeah, okay. Um, so for the last two meetings, I think we've talked about, about purchasing policy. Uh, this was, issue was raised not be not specifically because we thought there was a problem, but raised because we were certain that there was a lack of clarity in what we were supposed to be doing, in particular on our projects, our projects being projects that the EDC funds and leads ourselves, like the benches or Teagle's Land. Teagle's Landing is a good example because it's a big construction project. In some towns, it would be the town that would be buying and paying for Teagle's Landing. And the town of Woodstock has a purchasing policy that covers absolutely things like Teagle's Landing. Um, it has a process for bills, for, you know, the town manager's role and the, when bids have to be submitted and how they have to be reviewed and all of that. And it was very unclear, it has been unclear in the past and it is unclear to us whether or not that policy applies to any to the EDC, and, we, and and so we're trying to clarify that. And so what Larry has done, and in the documents for today's meeting, you can see three documents, the town policy, verbatim, a markup of the town policy, which crosses out the items that don't apply to the EDC, like the town manager will approve and will review and approve the bids. And then additions that, that say what it should be for the EDC, like a member of the EDC or the EDC as a whole will review the bids. And then that results in a clean, quite simplified document for the EDC that then would be the, po that is the policy that Larry's proposing. And the last thing I'll say is that the policy, in my opinion at least, that Larry's proposing, like the town policy, is designed to to give us quite a bit of flexibility and freedom 
uh, but it also allows for and identifies when we need to use a more formal bidding process. It allows us to get out of that process if we think that that's best, but it describes the process we should use if we think that that's best. And so I encourage us to consider this and to, and to pass it for all EDC-led projects going forward and not for grantees at this point. Um, just simply for the projects that we fund. And it's not a particular, it's not Teagle's Landing. It's all projects that we would fund for the EDC. So Larry, if I think I've said that correctly, can you just identify the major, the major requirements for this policy? And if you uh, want, I can put up, if, would you like me to screen share and put up the policy so you can point to it or do, would you rather not? I, it, that doesn't matter to me. Okay, I'll leave it off, go ahead. Um, well, uh, I guess the thing I'd emphasize is that we haven't taken anything uh, substantive out of this. This is, a, this is the town's policy with the parts that wouldn't apply to to us uh, taken out and we all we've done is add in um, uh, clarifications that for instance that it's it's the policy for projects that are initiated and led by the EDC we've added in um, or the suggestion is to add in a few things which I will will mention um, first of all it, it relates to purchases over three thousand dollars um, and if you have a purchase over three thousand uh, dollars, then this this policy is uh, in effect. There's the bid process, and the bid process. Um, uh, this was one of the things where uh, there seemed to be a lot of confusion. Um, you can place an ad in a newspaper, but you can also identify um, contractors or whatever uh, that are known providers and simply send a, a notice to them that you would like them to bid. Uh, you can put a bid solicitation on the town of Woodstock website. And we've added, or the proposal is to add from this 2013 uh, uh, policy, posting uh, something more up to date, which is posting a bid solicitation on the Woodstock, Woodstock Digest, because the idea there is uh, that, oh, many, many more people probably uh, would be aware of that. And that's a good way to get it, uh, the word out. So that's, that's one substantive addition uh, to the policy that would, would be added. Then there are uh, general uh, bid specifications, kind of the general thing of what, what's the project like, where is it, when do you want it done, what's the product, uh, um, and uh, uh, you can put these specifications together, but you can also do it simply by a site visit using Teagle Landing as an example. You could um, you could uh, mail a letter to several or two or three uh, organizations that might uh, contractors uh, who might want to do the project, and just in, instead of writing up a big long list of specifications, meet with those people at the site and explain exactly what it is you want to accomplish. So it's it it's a uh, uh, not that difficult to comply with. Uh, in fact, that's what we did with Teagle um, in, in, in a more uh, informal way. And then there's our, there's the criteria for bid selection, um, talking about the ability to perform their, the experience and reputation of the person, um, their financial responsibility. Um, but it also says that we have the right to, uh, in our sole uh, discretion, reject any and all bids, and also to select a contractor uh, based on our uh, one's understanding of that they might be uniquely qualified to do the project. So, uh, I guess the the idea there is that uh, you you don't have to have three bidders. You can have only one bid as long as you've made it the uh, apparent that we're looking for bids and you can select somebody uh, based on the reputation of that contractor or uh, service provider uh, and, uh, and, and that suffices. Um, and then uh, we can bid the whole process, we can uh, actually uh, waive the bid process um, if it's, it says if if the EDC determines that a particular manufacturer of a product or contractor or service provider is superior to its competitors 
it may waive the bid process and authorize the purchase from the sole source. That's in the town's policy. That's in our policy. You can see that it's not a terribly rigorous standard if uh, you know who you're dealing with. Um, and, and then um, a, a total exception from the bid process is for professional services. The town's policy, which is would be part of ours, is um, those are, are providers who are characterized by a high degree of professional judgment and discretion, including legal, financial, auditing, engineering, risk management, and insurance services. Um, I have suggested to add in design because uh, that would be, be consistent with that type of thing. And uh, that would be like architectural design or landscape design, that kind of thing. In that, in that instance, you don't even need to uh, use the bidding process. I think the highest, the best value to this is that um, it is what you talked about, John, which is there was a lot of lack of clarity. There was thoughts that you had to advertise in newspapers. Uh, there wasn't a clarity as whether it was $3,000 or $5,000 limit. Uh, there was a thought that you had to get at least three bids, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I think the, the, the big value of this is that there's now clarity is exactly what, what's, uh, what's required. Um, didn't go into questioning any of the provisions that the town policy had because um, it's been their policy and we thought that we would, uh, it would be right for us to simply use the exact same terminology that they did. I guess the, the one thing that this policy forces us to do, and I think that's a good thing, is to, is to simply justify by stating rationally and clearly if we don't want to follow the multiple bids, competitive bids, pick the lowest price. We simply have to articulate, we're picking, you know, if for example, we decided to do a sole source of this bench, we have to state on the record that we believe that this company is providing this bench is superior to its competitors. And here's just briefly why we believe that. And it forces us to make that transparent and clear. And I think that's a, uh, that's a good thing and it's not onerous. It, and it ensures that the town gets good value for its money. So, All right, so are there any questions? So I think I'd like to have a, um, f first, a motion to adopt this policy for all EDC-led projects, and then uh, have a discussion about it, and then take a vote. So, Larry, do you want to make that motion? Yeah, so, so moved. Okay. Is there a second? A second. Okay. Any discussions? Any questions or comments? First, from EDC members, and then from anybody else. Mika. Um, I haven't. Been oh, Larry, can you mute yourself back again? I think you're it's echoing, maybe. Thank you. I haven't been part of a lot of these conversations, you know, over the past 10 months. Um, so I might be missing something. Um, I struggle a little bit. And if I'm understanding correctly, what I'm hearing you say is that the town policy is that we don't have to collect bids. Um, and so the EDC is just asking or wondering whether or not we should adopt the town policy. I struggle with the idea of using taxpayer money to pay for something and not collect bids and try to go with the cheapest option or, or, you know, maybe cheapest isn't always best, you know, with that understanding, of course, maybe that's not always the answer, but um, just making sure that we're really uh, looking at, at all of the options objectively and making a sound financial choice. And so I struggle with that idea. But again, I have not been part of this conversation for a long time. And, and you know, maybe uh, there are very good reasons for that. So that's just my, my peanut gallery. I don't think you've missed anything. These discussions have only have been the last couple of meetings. And I don't think you've missed anything. I think we've... Okay. Yeah. I struggle with the idea of spending money without collecting bids. John, can I... Larry and then Courtney. Yeah, I, uh, Mika, I totally agree with you, but these are these are EDC projects, so it would be coming before the EDC, and at that point in time, if uh, you would simply say, "I think we should get bids," and 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 we would we would proceed to do that. 
Oh, gotcha. Okay, so it's not a blanket rule. It's no, not at all. Opening up the option. You could say we we would come and say, well, we have so and so is going to do all the work on Teagle Landing, and you could say, wait a minute, did you get any bids? And we'd have that discussion, and we'd say, you you know, they would say, let's go out and get bids. And gotcha. Okay. Okay. I feel better about that. As long as the option is still open, I do think that's important. Courtney? Yeah, and Mika, um, I, I think uh, what I have to applaud is the fact that, um, you know, early on when you were early, early involved that we did a lot of things relatively loosely and the fact that we've got policy going into place and um, we've, we've got a process that we've got now and the beauty of our committee, we're small enough that if it doesn't work, we can go back and, and fix it and change it and adjust it as, as we need and vote on it. So, um, but I, I appreciate it, uh, Larry and John, for, for getting us some structure. So thank you. Well, Larry did the, did the work. So um, any other comments uh, from, from anyone, actually? Bill, do you want to comment at all? I mean, it's, I, I, we're just adopting the policy that, you know, that, that that you follow for the town. Any anything you want to add, or? Well, and I think just to be clear, I think I don't have the policy in front of me, but I think we do require bids over three thousand dollars. If I'm not mistaken, I think that's our except for the professional services. So just to clarify that again, I don't have the yeah. purchasing policy in front of me, and there there are some exceptions there for like sole source or I think emergency situations. So. Well, and it's the so, right, and the, it's the exception for sole source is a pretty big exception <laughs> it basically the policy is basically that we have to have bids except when we decide for good reason not to have them right right i mean it, which, but so. i think it's a good i think it's a good idea for you not to tell you how to run your run your shop but i think it's always a good i think it's a pretty good policy of course everything can always be tweaked yep. a little bit but i think that's a good idea so okay I, I think just being consistent with your you know with the town's policy I, it, I it, is, so. it is the, the town's money right exactly. and the select board has to approve it so actually yeah so okay any any other comments or among any for anybody on this or before we vote okay if if it's unanimous then we don't have to do a roll call vote it doesn't have to be unanimous i'm just reminding us of the process uh, all in favor can you raise your hand so i can see it on the screen all in favor um leader has to vote leader you don't you could be you might be opposed I'm just waiting for Alita to mute herself. Unmute herself. No. You're in favor, Alita? Yep. Okay. Uh, any opposed? I don't think so. Okay. So the motion passes and the policy is adopted. Great. Uh, I, Sally, I, do I need to ask about if there's new business or did we do that in the additions or deletions to the agenda? You might just ask. Okay, I might. I'm so hungry. Okay, is there any new business? <laughs> that's great that's one reason for doing a six i think you might ask if this six o'clock meeting works that might be good to know from folks any any comments about that it's a great question i'm fine with that because i now have i can go eat and i've got another hour to watch my show right exactly <laughs> okay so we'll keep it it looks like attendance is about this so we had uh we had 18 or 19 people on 20 people maybe in total so it doesn't seem to affect attendance which is great um, so we'll keep it at 6 p.m. Uh, until we decide to change it. And uh, can I have a motion? Oh, sorry, Julia. Yeah, and I just wanted to tell everyone that um, either November or December will be my last meeting. And I'm going to step off from my role as the EDC on the EDC a little early. It's just like a couple months before my um, term, I guess, is up uh, because I am expecting twins in January. So. Um, <laughs> I imagine I'm going to have my hands full with three children under two years of age. It was congratulations, great. and uh, well, thank you. Well, we'll we'll honor your service when yeah. <laughs> uh, when the time comes. But uh, it's well understood. So, congratulations. Wow. Oh, uh, uh, Kareem. Yeah, I just want to know what what show does Courtney watch? <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching Queen of the South right now. Okay. <laughs> All right, if there's no other business, can I have a motion to adjourn? Moved. Uh, Julia, okay, is there a second? I'll second. Second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, 724.
Thanks, everybody. Thank you, John. Yeah, bye-bye.